What is going on guys and gals of YouTube? It's Anthony of the Primal Crew and I'm here today with a long-awaited episode of our podcast, The Gear Grind. What is The Gear Grind, you might ask? It is our podcast that covers anything and everything Pokemon related as pertaining to the Pokemon TCG, the Pokemon Go game, and beyond. If you guys are hyped for the return of this podcast and you guys are proud members of the Primal Crew, please make sure that you smash that like button down below, show your support for the channel, leave a comment on what you think or what you feel I should cover in the next episode, and above all else, do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more great TCG, Let's Play, and other random videos. To start it off, if you are not a follower on my Instagram page, at Primal Crew YT, I will put that down below in the description. You will be missing out on a giveaway that I am actually hosting that is being partnered uh, by my friends at Pokien.com. www.pokene.com. Uh, they are a website that is just you know starting to pick up some traction that deals with a lot of uh, Pokemon-related items such as Pokemon uh, Japanese booster packs in lots, Pokemon Japanese booster boxes. Uh, they are eventually going to start moving into uh, some of the English sets, but they do want to specialize in Japanese because the Japanese sets are very, very underrated, if you ask me, and their condition is a heck of a lot better than anything that we do over here in the U.S. Uh, if you disagree with that, come fight me and you will see a difference. Um, but do look out on my Instagram page. We are going to be running a giveaway to kind of promote their page a little bit more. Um, it's going to consist of a uh, Alternate Jirachi GX, the one that came in the Walmart exclusive box. Uh, it is also going to consist of a Suicune pin. And also I'm going to include about one to two random code cards as well. Uh, to enter into this giveaway, all you have to do is comment in that picture, and that picture should be up in the next couple days, and just put down uh, the Gear Grind podcast, and you will be automatically entered. Please do not forget to follow my page, and also follow his Instagram page, which will also be linked down below in the description as well. So again, all you have to do is go to my Instagram page, at PrimalCrewYT, find the picture that has the Jirachi promo and the Suicune pin, uh, go in the comment section down below after following me and following Pokien on Instagram and put down in the comment section down below the gear grind. Once you do that, you will be entered in. Uh, the, uh, the giveaway is going to probably last for a couple weeks and I will be doing a random live stream to pick whoever the winner is. Um, all right, into some of the current events that are happening right now in Pokemon Go. Uh, we are currently right now knee-deep in the uh, Pokemon Go Rocket Celebration, where we have three new uh, non-shiny shadows, uh, which is Aeron, Sveal, and uh, Swinub. And right now, we also have three new, uh, excuse me, shadow shinies from the team leaders. Uh, for Cliff's team, uh, it is an Aerodactyl that can be shiny. For Arlo's team, it can be the Beldum. And Sierra's team, a lot of the ones that people are actually really gunning for, is going to be Carvana. Uh, the hardest out of the three teams, if I'm looking at this correctly, is going to be Cliff's team. Uh, because Cliff's team consists of Aerodact Aerodactyl at the beginning, and then a combination of Gallade, Slowking, Cradilly, Tyranitar, Dusnoir, and Mamoswine. Mamoswine is probably the easiest. All you really need is a good water type, and that Mamoswine is done. Um, so, if you haven't completed any of the research right now that's been limited time, at the time of this recording, it's only got about a day left. So, definitely get out there and do what you can. Especially for my fellow uh, trainers that are over level 40, trying to get into that level 45 range. This is your perfect opportunity to be battling Team Go Rocket Grunts and the leaders in order to get past that plateau to get to level 45. I'm in that boat right now where I still need about 25 team leaders in order to level up to level 45. Um, current or er, upcoming events. For those of you that are overseas uh, at the time of this recording, it has probably already started for you. But for us over here in the U.S. at 11 a.m. tomorrow, Sunday, February 7th, is going to be Roselia Community Day. Bleh. Probably one of the more underwhelming community days, considering when we first got Shiny Roselia, 
it was everywhere. Where's I mean, Roselia without an event right now is actually everywhere as well, especially if you have sunny weather. Or if you have cloudy weather and you get poison types. It's the same thing. Um, so it's a little underwhelming. Um, I can't say that I'm necessarily, you know, going to be going out there too much. Um, I mean, obviously you get the increased spawns. You get the three-hour incense for one incense, so you can just use two. And, yeah, um, it's not that great. I mean, the the exclusive move of Weather Ball for uh, Roserade when you evolve it, is nice because it is weather ball with a fire typing so that's kind of cool but all at the same time i mean it's not a it's not a new shiny it's really not so i'm a little miffed by it uh with the event it's uh it does give you a fourth hatch uh fourth hatch distance for eggs uh, we are currently running on the same, almost the exact same thing right now with this rocket event. So I don't, it won't stack, obviously. I don't think it will. Um, a couple of the upcoming events for Tuesday, February 9th is the Lunar New Year event. By the way, if you're curious where I'm getting any of this information from, it is all on leakduck.com. Go to leakduck.com for any of your Pokemon Go information event needs. Uh, they don't sponsor this channel as well. Uh, hopefully in the future one of them will sponsor my channel. Uh, but go to www.leekduck, that's L-E-E-K-D-U-C-K.com for any of your Pokemon Go event information needs. Uh, but starting February 9th, 2021, all the way up until Valentine's Day, February 14th, uh, you can encounter, excuse me, encounter red Pokemon and celebrate the Year of the Ox. A special Mega Evolved Pokemon will also be appearing in Mega Raids for the first time at the start of the event. Um, so, event exclusive research tasks will re will reward encounters with Meowth, Alolan Meowth, Galarian Meowth, Metatite, and Miltank. Now, for those of you that uh, don't know, Miltank was actually part of an event that happened last week that actually re or released its shiny variant. Miltank is actually blue when it's shiny, so it's great. Um... Gifts uh, will contain more Pokeballs, so be sure to uh, grab lots of gifts. That is going to be great for something that's happening later on in the month, so do hand out your gifts. Uh, you're more likely to become lucky friends with your friends, so be sure to swap gifts, raid in battles, and trade with them. So if you, I know the whole pandemic and everything hasn't allowed a lot of people to actually do special trades, but if you haven't gotten to be lucky friends with people... I didn't mean to say special trades, to be lucky friends. If you haven't had that opportunity to be lucky friends with your best friend, your neighbor, your friend, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle, or anybody like that, this is your opportunity to do so. Uh, when you trade, it'll be more likely to become lucky as well. So you won't necessarily need to have to be lucky friends. You do have a very, very great opportunity to get more lucky Pokemon in trades. So if you're going from level 48 to 49, spoiler, uh, you need to have about 50 lucky tr uh, lucky Pokemon in trades. Just putting that out there. Um, let's see. In celebration of the Ostoros, the Wild Bull Pokemon will be featured in Time Research. Um, some of the red Pokemon that will be appearing in the Wild uh, that you can actually get shiny uh, will be Krabby, which is great because that doesn't turn red. Uh, Goldeen, which I actually personally missed out on a couple events ago. Magmar, which is awesome. Magikarp, the return of Magikarp. For those of you that didn't finish a previous Community Day task, you actually needed to catch 15 Magikarp. That would be myself, so that'll actually be good. Gyarados, which is going to be very, very fun to get a wild Gyarados and a possible shiny Gyarados in the wild. Uh, Miltank, as we mentioned earlier. Metatite is another one. And Tepig. Tepig will be the only one that will not have a shiny available. Um, raid battles, I'm not going to go too much into detail with that, but, uh, some of the, uh, the newer ones are returning, I should say, coming into raids, is actually going to be Latias and Latios, so you will have another chance to actually get those shiny forms next week. Uh, and the new Pokemon that will actually be showing up in Mega Raids will be Mega Gyarados. So it is. It will be time to start battling and raiding against Mega Gyarados to get those candies, so you can Mega Evolve your best, 
Gyarados either with its legacy move or your strongest one to get Mega Gyarados. So that will cover Lunar New Year. Obviously, uh, Tauros will kind of be your focus if you want, if you haven't gotten that shiny variant as well. Uh, we already mentioned about Latios and Latios returning to raids. Uh, this upcoming Tuesday, the 9th, will be Miltank Spotlight Hour. So for those of you that haven't gotten your shiny Miltank uh, between the hours of 6 and 7, your local time, on that day will be your best opportunity to get shiny Miltank. Uh... Upcoming on Valentine's Day from February 14th, 1 o'clock, to Thursday, February 18th, 8 p.m., uh, will be the Valentine's Day event. Um, you can look forward to some Pokemon making their Pokemon Go debut, as well as exclusive Avatar items. Stay tuned for more details. So there isn't much on it yet, because we still have a couple events in between Valentine's Day, so do be aware of that. On February uh, 16th, will be Love Disc Spotlight Hour, where you can get Love Disc in a shiny form, which is a golden shiny. I still personally have never caught one in the wild myself. I have traded for one that became lucky, and that's about it. The big thing that is happening at closer to the end of this month, it's actually a day before my birthday, FYI. Saturday, February 20th, is the Pokemon Go Tour Kanto. Uh, and then it is a one-day event, but it is from 9 a.m. your local time till 9 p.m. your local time. So you have a lot of time to do this. Uh, and this is actually going to be part of the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. 25th anniversary of Pokemon is actually February 27th. Uh, and it's going to be a huge thing for the Pokemon TCG, and we'll be uh, getting into that in just a little bit. But with uh, Pokemon Go... Uh, so, with celebrating this, we're excited to announce a virtual ticketed event that trainers all around the globe will be able to take part in. No matter where you are in the world, take a trip back to the region where it all started in Kanto. Uh, experience the wonder of the games that sparked a global phenomenon. In this ticketed version of this event, you'll choose between the red version and green version of the event experience, each featuring version-exclusive Pokemon harking back to the days of red and blue um let's see trading with a friend who chose the other event will be important just so uh it was in pokemon red and uh pokemon green they mean blue because in the u.s we only got red and blue um can you collect all 150 original pokemon in one day uh we're also excited to announce that during the pokemon go tour kanto event the first 150 Pokemon originally discovered in the Kanto region will be available as shiny Pokemon, some of them for the first time ever. That is huge. If you're lucky, you just might find a shiny Pokemon. It's not being specific. You'll be able to encounter these shiny Pokemon after the event is over as well. So, the big thing with that, if you, like, at any point now, on that day, all 150 Pokemon, from Bulbasaur all the way down to Dragonite. I'm not going to include any of the legendaries, unfortunately, because you can't account for those in the wild. Uh, their shiny variants will be available. So if you run into a Muck in the wild, you have an opportunity to get that as a shiny. If you run into a Kabutops in the wild, you can get it shiny. Snorlax will be revealed. Its shiny form is going to be revealed on February 20th. You will have an opportunity to get it shiny. The big one that a lot of people are going to be gunning for is Ditto. Now, the question uh, that a couple of my friends have tossed back and forth is, how is that one exactly going to get released? Is it going to have to be that you have to catch a specific Pokemon that can transform into Ditto? Or will Ditto spawn on its own? You let me know in the comment section down below what you think uh, will be their course of action, because it's not going to list it here. Um, if you pick... Uh, let's see. I am going through my notes on which ones. There we go. So, if you pick red version for this, and you actually, if you haven't already bought the ticket, if you have bought the ticket, it does give you the option when you click on it to scroll down to pick your version. If you want to pick red version, your red version exclusive Pokemon will be Ekans, Oddish, Mankey, Growlithe, Scyther, and Electabuzz. That will be attracted to your incense. You'll have an increased chance of encountering these shiny Pokemon specifically. Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, Oddish, I'm sorry, Squirtle, Pidgey, Ekans, Pikachu, Nidoran Female, 
Oddish Diglett, Mankey Growlithe, Ponyta Shelter, which is one of my favorites, Drowsy Krabby, Hitmonlee making its debut, Lickitung, Scyther, Electabuzz, Eevee, Kabuto, and Dratini. So if you want any of those as your exclusive from the above list, then you will pick red version. For the green version exclusive, which is the one that I am personally choosing, green version exclusive Pokemon will be Santru, Volpex, Meowth, Bellsprout, Magmar, and Pinsir. They will be more attracted to your incense. You'll have an increased chance of encountering these shiny Pokemon. A lot of them are the exact same. Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle... Pidgey, Pikachu, Sandrew, Nidoran, Male, Vulpix, Meowth, Psyduck, Bellsprout, Geodude, Execute, Hitmonchan, which is the one that I'm going to be gunning a lot for, Coughing, Tangela, Horsey, Magmar, Pinsir, Eevee, Ammonite, which is the one shiny that has been eluding me since it got released a couple years ago, and Dratini. Earn rewards by collecting the first 150 Pokemon originally discovered in Kanto. You'll be uh, you'll be able to collect the first 150 Pokemon originally discovered in the Kanto region in several challenges, earning rewards as you do. Uh, also during this, the legendary birds Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres will be back, and Mewtwo will also be back in raids. Now for those specific Pokemon, they will have uh, a like a special event move. For Articuno will be Hurricane. For Zapdos will be Thunder Shock, and Moltres will have Sky Attack. Mewtwo will also have Psy Strike. Uh, and if you, <laughs> uh, let's see, if you catch a Venusaur in the wild, uh, caught or evolved, excuse me, it will know the its Community Day move, Frenzy Plant. Charizard, caught or evolved, will know Blast Burn. Blastoise, caught or evolved, will have Hydro Cannon. Fantastic. If you had bought the ticket back in December when they first revealed it, you're, normally they give you Community Day tickets where you can get like exclusive research. But if you bought the ticket back in December, you get all the exclusive research for the past Community Day, which I believe was Machop, and this upcoming one tomorrow at the time of this recording, which is Roselia. Uh, let's see. How to purchase the ticket. You just go... Uh, into the Pokemon Go shop uh, for eleven ninety nine. That's not a bad price considering that it's a nine to nine uh, event, which I think is actually really cool. I personally don't mind it. Uh, the Pokemon that will be making their shiny debuts: uh, Spearow, which is one of my most hated Pokemon. I've always hated it, harking back to its time in the anime. When it attacked Ash and Pikachu in the very beginning, you know which one I'm talking about. Paris, which has just a really, really dark tone to it. Uh, Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, as I uh, mentioned earlier. Ditto and Snorlax, as I mentioned earlier. And Mew. Mew is actually going to be the research exclusive shiny. If you missed out on getting Mew the very, very first time, or you still haven't completed that research, trust me, you will be able to complete that research to get a regular Mew. And you'll also have the opportunity to get Shiny Mew as well. Uh, increase Shiny Rates for Red Version. We've already gone through all those. Increase Shiny Rates for Green Version. We've already mentioned those. Again, it does not give any information about how you are supposed to get Shiny Ditto. That will be a secret. I have a feeling it's going to be something along the lines of catching something like a Pidgey, a Spearow, or another Pokemon that can transform into Ditto. If you happen to catch a shiny version of a Pidgey, a Rattata, a Spearow, it has the opportunity for it to become a Ditto. Otherwise, they're going to probably spawn it in the wild, and you'll have the opportunity to get it then. Uh, we've already gone through the legendaries that are coming back during that event. Um, and February 23rd, the last Spotlight Hour of February will be Pikachu Spotlight Hour. There has been no announcement if it's going to have a special hat or if it's just going to be Pikachu in general. So do look out for those events coming up in Pokemon Go. That was a lot, but I wanted to get you guys all caught up and up to speed. In terms of Pokemon the TCG, 
We are probably about a week or so away. Depending upon where you are, it may have already been leaked out into stores. From Shiny Vault. I believe that's the name of the new set that's coming out. Uh, I mean, it's not a it's not a full set. It's a sub-series. Uh, let me just make sure that I'm looking at... Or, oh, excuse me, Shining Fates, not Shining Vault. Shining Vault was the other one. Shining Fates is the new one that's coming up. Um, and that is going to be insane with how much uh, that price is probably going to go up on boxes. And at the rate that people are going right now, and this will be probably, probably my rant of this entire uh, podcast, with how things have been treated recently with uh, the restocks of Pokemon cards in stores specifically in places like Target, Walmart, some Walgreens, and some other locations, on how people literally line up from the time stores open at 8 a.m. all the way until a representative from MJ Holding or whatever company comes in to restock Pokemon cards. It is obnoxious, and it is, in, in a lot of ways, disgusting to me on how long these people line up for this stuff how, how long people line up for this TCG merchandise. Not just Pokemon stuff, but they also do it for football and basketball. We're not talking about that. We're talking about Pokemon cards. The fact that some of these people literally camp out in the store for like well over eight hours. And then when it actually comes time for these restocks, they will have a shopping cart with them and they will pretty much just wipe the shelf clean while there's a bunch of people behind them. And it's really disgusting to me. Some stores have actually gotten it right by putting up limits. By saying that due to the high demand of trading cards and other trading card games, you are only allowed one item of a specific SKU number. And I personally like that. Because that gives the opportunity for some people to actually get something for their kid. Or for their friend that isn't able to actually go out. There are some stores that still haven't gotten hip with that. And unfortunately, that has caused... Like I said, people to completely clean out shelves. Uh, I think there was a video that I saw where somebody, uh, where a Walmart actually restocked on uh, Hidden Fates Elite Trainer boxes. Those have gone up crazy in price. Uh, but yeah, like there was like 12 on a shelf. The dude put all 12 in his basket and bought them all. Like why? Like are you that desperate to make money that you're going to clean out a shelf just to, you know, try and make, try and upsell somebody from a box that's normally $50. You're going to try and get two or $250 for that box, if not more. Are you that lazy that you can't actually get a job that you're using your unemployment money, if you're on unemployment, which you most likely are because you're able to spend eight hours a day inside Targets or inside Walmarts? Like it's just, you're dis like anybody that does that. If you're listening to this, you're disgusting. Do not do that. Do not offload every single item on a shelf just because you can't find a job or you're too lazy to go find a job and you're going out there and you're buying seven to hundred dollars worth of Pokemon cards in a hope to make three to four thousand dollars on those cards. Like get the fuck out of here. Like if you're doing it because you're purchasing them for the love of the game. It's still kind of disgusting to me that you're going to buy everything on the shelf. Like, you don't need everything. You could buy, like, if there's four, like, 12 Elite Trainer boxes, buy, like, two to four. Leave enough for somebody else. Don't buy all 12. And then also at the same point, if you're one of those that does, uh, uh, like, Elite Trainer box breaks or box breaks on, like, Twitch, on YouTube, on uh, Instagram, I've seen some people do that. If you're getting it from a distributor, that's one thing. But if you're making a video of you cleaning out a shelf and you're going out of your way to uh, just try and make money, like, just try and, like, upsell people. Like, I know the, pr the price on Pokemon right now has been at an all-time obnoxious high. I get it. But damn. Like, there are some limits on what you should and what you shouldn't do. Okay. Now, luckily for me, I have the opportunity that I work in a Target store that's very, very small where I can actually control on how much these Pokemon cards and other trading cards actually go out. So if somebody comes into my store asking me for Pokemon cards, I ask them which ones. 
they tell me, okay, like, can I get all of them? No, you can't get all of them. It's a limit of one to two per person. And if they ask me why, I'll just say because the demand's way too high. Uh, I ask coworkers that also collect Pokemon cards, like, hey, if you want some, like, I will grab them for you and I'll bring them up front. I try and give everybody an opportunity to buy Pokemon cards before I get my like before I get my hands on them. If we we've gone times where nobody has asked for them and they just kind of sit in the back, then at that point, I try and reach out to any of my friends that are uh, either overseas or in different states that can't get their hands on cards and ask them, "Hey, I've got you know this product here. I've got Champions Path. I've got Alakazam V boxes. Do you want any of them?" I will purchase it for them, and then I will send it out to them. I'm not going to upsell you. I'm not going to overcharge you. If it costs me $20, it's going to cost you $20. The only thing that may cost you a little bit more is shipping, but that goes without saying. So, yeah, for you uh, resellers, for you scalpers out there that are buying up all these cards, fucking get a job, okay? Don't, don't come into these stores and camp out for eight hours in your sweats in your fucking flip-flops with no socks and just stand there and wait until this, you know, poor innocent person comes to resell or restock the cards just for you to <laughs> heavy breathe over their shoulder and wait until they're done and then clear out their shelves. Like, buy a few, leave enough for everybody else, and get on with your damn grubby life. Pardon me. So... That's that's my stance on this whole restock, you know, waiting thing that people are doing. It's disgusting. It's stupid. It's unnecessary. Okay. And again, thanks to great influencers like Logan Paul buying up two to three million dollars worth of cards, you've kind of ruined the game for the rest of us because now anybody and everybody is trying to go out of their way to buy cards. For I mean, for God's sake. <coughs> You look at Champion's Path when it first came out. Granted, yeah, you can get a Rainbow Rare Charizard VMAX or a Shiny Charizard out of it. That's all well enough. Like, yeah, I can see the card kind of inflate, or like the boxes for Elite Trainer boxes going from like $50 to like $70 or $75. But you got people out there because, you know, the price on all Pokemon cards have been going up like crazy. Trying to upsell those for like $120, $130, $140, $150. It's stupid. Evolutions is the best example of all this, if I haven't already covered that. The fact that you've got people that are going out of their way now, and even, like, so if you were to go back about a year or two ago, about two years, Evolutions booster boxes, you couldn't sell those. You couldn't give them away. You had boxes that were listed at, like, $90. And had I known what I know now, I would have probably bought a bunch, and I probably would have kept them. And I would have been opening them because of the nostalgia factor. Not because I want the money, or not because I'm going to resell the booster boxes. I have never sold a booster box in my life. I have traded booster boxes with somebody, but I have never sold a booster box. Why? Because I'm not a dirty scumbag. If I'm going to sell a booster box, it's going to be in the terms of trying to buy a different booster box. I'm not going to sell the booster box and upsell just so that way I can make money off of it. No. But you look at Evolutions back two years ago when it was like $90 a booster box. The last time I remember seeing one listed on eBay, on Amazon, or any of these other like selling websites, they're between $600 and $1,000. How stupid does that sound right now for Evolutions? A set that nobody could get rid of, now nobody can get back in stock. Like, wow. Wow. <laughs> And again, it's all because of that. All thanks to Logan Paul and other poker and other influencers. And speaking of that, that actually goes into my next rant. I'm sorry. I thought I was going to have only one rant in this one. This is probably going to be a long podcast episode. So grab a drink, grab a snack, listen in. You have Pokemon YouTubers out there. Some great Pokemon YouTubers. People that have been doing trading cards for their entire channel. Channels like the Pokemon Evolutionaries. They. I know, I know the Pokemon Evolutionaries. Chris uh, and his stepson, Noel. Great guys. Great people. Love them to death. They've been doing trading cards on their channel through, the, through their very, very beginning. 
They sprinkle in a little bit of video game Let's Plays here and there, but a lot of the, what they do deals with the Pokemon TCG. you got people like Unlisted Leaf. Unlisted Leaf has been doing Pokemon cards since the dawn of time, it seems like. Sure, his you know reactions are very over the top, but he's been doing Pokemon TCG since the beginning. I really hate to say his name, but you got people like Leonhardt. I don't like him. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't like Leonhardt. Like, I feel like, you know, because of his past being a lawyer and stuff like that, and because of the quote-unquote money that he has, that he has all these really rare, expensive boxes in a undisclosed location, and then he shows them off like his, uh, his most rare boxes. It's like, nobody cares. Like all you all all he really does on his channel nowadays has been nostalgia openings. He'll do uh, Team Rocket, Team Rocket Returns, Gym Challenge, Gym Heroes, the Neo sets. He'll do some jungle, some fossils, some base set, some legendary collection. Like the average person right now can't do that. And with his whole promotion that he's doing right now of his pop up shop, I mean, in theory, it's a great idea. But during a pandemic right now, who the hell is going to be able to get to you other than locals in Texas? And unless you're able to actually crowd control or control like anything that you're selling online for any of these, you know, sharks that are coming out here, because he wants, so long story short, he wants to sell base set and other items for their original prices that they were sold back in 1999, which was like $3.99 a pack. For a base set pack at $3.99, you are just asking for trouble. But you're going to have influencers coming at you left and right, like megastars that are going to try and buy out everything. Now, if he's not money hungry, he'll be able to control it. But if he is money hungry, he's probably going to sell it all to one person. Back on topic. Not my favorite person. Just because of his over-the-top antics when he's like, Oh my god, I got this! And the fact that he flaunts all of his older stuff. His channel has revolved mainly a brown Pokemon TCG. Any of these other Pokemon YouTubers that have been primarily, and I use that word very, very tightly, primarily around the Pokemon uh, VGC, the video game like series, if they've been doing Let's Plays, Nuzlocks, Cage Locks, anything like that, now are going into the territory of doing Pokemon TCG. One of the biggest culprits of this, and I don't really give a damn or give a shit if he if like if he knows who I am or if he tries to react to this. Go ahead and, and like add him if you want me to. But somebody like A Drive, who has been known, and I used to watch him a lot, who has been known to, you know, do let's plays, to do cage locks, to doing a lot of VGC. Like he's a very very good battler. Like I'll give him that. But now he's going into this uh, this age of doing Pokemon unboxings. Like he's a big enough channel at like four or five hundred thousand subscribers, I think. I don't remember his exact subscriber count. But now he's going into crossing over into the TCG world that is hurting the channels that may not be as big as Unlisted Leaf, may not be as big as Leonhardt. Like, I think the Pokemon Evolutionaries are right around the 200,000, if not a little bit more than that, subscriber count. But, like, his channel, because he does TCG, is taking away from those other channels. Why? Because A-Drive has money to buy more and more product. There was something on his Instagram story. Don't know why he's still on my Instagram story. That in his background, he had about four to eight Pokemon Hidden Fates... Elite Trainer Box is stacked up. Where the fuck do you get all those? Are you one of those people that are waiting inside a Walmart or inside a Target to pick them all up? Do you have a friend that is selling it to you cheap so you can have them in the back? He's got Pokemon boxes. Like I think he has a first edition Fossil or first edition Jungle in his background as he's opening up TCG or as he's playing his games. Like, it is... Hold on. It is so wrong and it is so disrespectful to us little channels because we can't compete if you have more money. Obviously, I know like money is king. 
Like, if you got the money, you got the power. If you got the power, you got the audience. If you got the audience, you're going to win every time. But stick to what you know and don't go and don't cross over into what we've done on our channels. When I first started doing, like, my pack openings, I was doing pack openings and I was doing video games. I was doing video game Let's Plays. I was doing Nuzlocks. I was trying to cross over into other consoles. But I ultimately was more doing TCG. Now if I try if I try and post anything TCG, like if I post one hidden fates tin, like if I'm somehow able to find a hidden fates tin and like I try and post that opening, I'll get overshadowed by somebody like him who's got one, two, three, four, five, six elite trainer boxes to open. Like do you understand like I don't know if you guys understand on how much that hurts some like a channel like mine because yeah granted i i have like about 1400 subscribers he's got almost 500,000 who are you going to watch are you going to watch my channel for my one little dinky tin or his channel for 6 to 8 elite trainer boxes you're going to go for the one that has the most of course you are i wouldn't blame you but then you got all these other guys like and i and i love his video game content but you got somebody like Original 151 who actually somehow got into the live stream with Logan Paul, bought one of the packs, which by the way, Logan Paul was selling the packs at $11,111 if you didn't know that. He bought one pack, he got a Blastoise, he got it graded, and now all of a sudden, oh my god, TCG is great. It's like you never did anything like that on your channel before, don't fucking do it now. Because then you're taken away from us. We're the TCG channels. We're the ones that started it. We're the ones that continue doing it. Albeit, you know, not for myself. I don't necessarily post all the time. But you're taken away from the channels that actually dedicate their time to doing nothing but TCG. And you're killing them. You're hurting the smaller channels for what? Just so you can open up Pokemon cards because it's the big craze now? Stick to what you know. Like, if you're going to do, like, a one-off, like, hey, I got this cool booster box, I'm going to open it for you, that's great. But then you start purchasing, you know, first edition booster boxes from Fossil, from Jungle, <clears throat> excuse me, Team Rocket, Gym Hero, Gym Challenge. You start buying booster boxes like that that are, like, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 and then showing them off, that just proves you're just, you're, you're a bandwagoner. You just jump on the craze because everybody else that's a big influencer is doing it. Stick to the video games that you've been doing on your channel this entire time. Stay away from our territory. Don't don't hurt don't hurt the smaller channels. Unless you want people talking shit like me. There's one more thing that I'm going to cover. And it actually has to do with a certain individual named the Collectibles Guru. I don't know the guy. I may have only seen him like once or twice. But he's one of the reasons why things have gotten to the way that they have. Because he's the one that's gotten into Logan Paul's ear. And sold him a first edition booster box. And some graded uh, Venusaur Blastoise Charizard cards. That has caused the Pokemon community and the Pokemon TCG to just completely explode and subsequently implode as well. Um, but this guy's a scumbag. <laughs> like, let's just... Let me call it spade a spade. The guy is literally only in it for the money. And he makes that very clear by calling these things nostalgic cardboard. Pieces of cardboard. Nothing else. Doesn't give a damn about the history. Doesn't give a damn about anything else. He'll post on his TikToks. Because he came up on my For You page. And he'll flaunt the fact that he has. You know stacks of money. Stacks of this. Stacks of that. Um, and for what? Like what What do you do for a living? You egg headed son of a bitch. Like he, act, he got into some trouble recently. Where he actually uh, sold a fake booster box or tried to sell a fake booster box to I forgot what their channel name was or yeah what they what their actual channel name is on YouTube but it also involved Leonhart 
who is, you know, let's just all be, you know, realistic. He is a very, very smart individual and is, you know, somebody that I would trust to let me know if something was real or something was fake. Obviously, and this was caught on a live stream that the box that this dude, uh, the collectibles guru, um, and he tried to sell a fake booster box saying that, oh, well, the guy that I bought it from seemed legit. Right. The person you bought it from seemed legit. You're not legit. You probably tampered with the box yourself. So now he's all pissed off trying to talk shit about Lee and Hard saying that uh, he, like, fucked me over this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, don't, don't try and, don't try and pass it off other than the fact that you fucked up. But yeah, no, he's got, like, suitcases with $200,000 on it. He's got, you know, heavy packs of, like, Pokemon uh, EX Dragons, or what is that, Dragon... Yeah, it, it's one of the E series ones, um, and yeah, like he's showing like, oh, the twenty fifth anniversary, I can get my hands on it now. It's like great, nobody cares. You're shaped like a fucking uh, like a fucking thin thing of bamboo. Like nobody, like nobody gives a shit about you. But then don't talk. Sh- <laughs> and then he talks about how haters, like myself, I'm a hater of his, are just coming at him for clout. Dude, you're the one that tries to start Twitter wars with people because you want, like, the attention. And we'll give you the attention because you're a piece of shit. That's really the only reason why any of us talk shit about you. Like, I'm pretty sure you're just... You're a whore in the Pokemon community. That's why you flaunt the money. That's why you flaunt all this, quote-unquote, expensive stuff that you somehow get your hands on super easily... Like, you're, you're worthless in this community. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't care about anything in the Pokemon community. You just want the money. Just go on, go back to the street corner where you're from and do your job out there and open your mouth. Because that's all you're good for. Alright? And if anybody wants to try and, you know, let him know that I'm talking shit, please, Baldy, come at me. Because if you try anything, I'll snap you in half. I'll snap you faster than Macho Man snapped a Slim Jim. So, yeah, I just wanted to get my two cents out of that because, you know, I think he's a complete piece of shit. He's worthless. And, yeah. Um, but I'm going to be winding down this podcast right now because it has been going very, very long. And I feel like I've been ranting for just as long. So, if you guys have enjoyed this, please do not forget to drop a like down below. Do not forget to comment on anything that may have tickled your fancy, may have ruffled your feathers. Or if you just want to comment on uh, topics that you want me to cover in the next video, please do so. And also, do not forget to subscribe to my channel for more great TCG Let's Play and other random videos. And also, above all that, do not forget to go to my Instagram at PrimalCrewYT. And in the next couple days, there will be a picture up with the Jirachi GX Alternate Art Full Arts. These sweet Queen pins for the upcoming giveaway that I'm going to be doing on there. Again, to enter into that contest, there will be more details in that actual picture bio. Um, just uh, follow my page and follow the other page that's going to be on there, which is going to be uh, Pokien. Uh, I'll list their Instagram page down, be- down below. Uh, follow both of our pages, and then in the comment section of my picture, my picture alone, uh, just put the gear grind, and that will automatically enter you in. Uh, and also, do not forget to check out the website, www.pokien.com. That is www.pokene.com for any of your TCG needs. Like I said, he is doing a lot of uh, great things with the Pokemon TCG that is from the Japan area. Um, eventually, I believe there will be a uh, promo code. I don't have the promo code up yet. Uh, but as soon as I do, I'll be more than uh, you'll be more than sure to hear about it in the coming future. But that is going to be it for the rest of this podcast. I do want to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to just listen to me ramble and rant about things. Again, if anything tickled your fancy or if it ruffled your feathers, please let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I will be checking in with you guys in the next episode. 
So, once again, thank you guys for coming out and checking out the podcast. I've been Anthony. You guys have been the best part of the Primal Crew, and I will catch you guys next time. And as always, thank you all so much for your support. Take it easy, and have a nice day.